It's lovely to meet you and I know this is your third time at the Wimborne Food Festival. Having a good day? I'm having a lovely day. It's a real pleasure to be down here again and to see how the Food Festival has progressed uh, in the years that I've been coming here. So you've been cooking with spices today. Can you talk me through the dishes? Yep, I cooked um, a mixture of spicy dishes today. Uh, there was um, vanilla chicken with roasted peppers and white wine, which sounds a bit odd, but is delicious. Uh, and then I cooked, I'm trying to remember, prawn, avocado and mango salad with pink peppercorns. Uh, a masala chai, so a spice tea, which is lovely, sort of like a spice lover's horlicks, it's very soothing. And then it was finally, delicious. Oh, you tasted some, did you? <laughs> I'm a fan of masala tea, coming from an Asian mm, yeah. background and all. Um, it was really, really nice, and it wasn't overpowering. No, it's not overpowering, just soothing. I think that's really the trick to it, isn't it? To get a sort of a mixture of spices that you like, that's not so overwhelming that you kind of, ooh, but, but, <laughs> but that still has, a, it feels quite therapeutic, you know, just you're putting yourself to right. It's a great, a great trick. Um, and then I also did a little, oh, there go the bells. Um, I did a little uh, side dish of, uh, of onions with sumac. Which is gorgeous. Your recent book is called Spices, so what inspired you to write about them? Oh, I've always loved spices. I, I love cooking with spices. I think they're fascinating, they're strange, there's a magic to spices that no other kind of food category has in quite the same way. But they've always had that sense of the exotic. But what I find intriguing is that we have all these jars in our cupboards um, you know, with little brown things in them or ground up brown powders. I mean, and we don't really know what what they're like, what they grow, the way they grow. And for me, this was an exploration of you know, how spices grow, what they actually are. And you know, they are so different and so strange and so unlike the things that end up in our kitchens in the way that they grow. Do you think they're becoming more fashionable in the UK these days, spices? I think the British have always had a love affair with spices, really since the days of the Raj, when they brought them over, misused them totally, and then made something good out of them as well, like you know, kedgeree, for instance. Uh, so we, we've always liked spices, and after all the, the uh, you know, going down and down the Indian after a night out is uh, is a big tradition. <laughs> Whether they really appreciate then the subtlety of spices is neither here nor there, but. Um, but now I think we are learning more about how to use them well and how to get the best flavour out of spices and, um, you know, and how to use them in different ways because there are you know, endless, endless permutations. To put you on the spot, do you have a favourite spice? No, I totally don't have a favourite spice. I, I could be persuaded that any spice was my favourite just at the time I was using it, but no, I don't. And I love that different spices give you different things uh, and you, you can be subtle. You know, what's so great about spices? You can be subtle, you can be bold, you can be, you know, you can have a sort of Indian-y, continent, continental feel or else you can go for Mexican. Or, you know, to me, there is no spice which is better than others. For some advice, you're a very accomplished <laughs> chef and for some advice for first-time chefs who, or amateur chefs who come along in the kitchen, they're not sure when things are done, they're not sure, what advice would you give them? <laughs> try, try, try again and, and don't panic. Those are, my, those are my mantras, really. <laughs> don't panic. I've had to panic. I've, no, I've had to not panic quite often when things have gone wrong. But I think, you know, when you're trying things out, follow the recipe the first time, change it if you think you could do it better. You may like things a different way, always be confident. And when it comes to spices, my main advice for people who are new to spices is where possible buy whole spices and grind them yourself. It's not very difficult and you'll get much more flavour out of them. But I do have to ask, to make everyone feel better, what's your biggest kitchen blunder? Um, my biggest kitchen blunder is hard to work out because I have had quite a lot. Um, I'm very adept at dissembling. So uh, something rather too dark, char grilled, definitely caramelised, uh, or if things are rice, caught a bit on the bottom. Persian chill out rice, that nice crust you get from it. If it's overcooked and it's getting a bit squidgy, glutinous rice. So a little bit of sort of replaying things, I think, is, is, is the trick to getting out of your mistakes. And lastly, just to ask you, we're coming up to winter. What tips do you have for a seasonal ingredient that we all should use? 
coming up to winter, uh, it's suddenly getting very, very cold. Something to warm us up then. <laughs> oh, soups make lots of gorgeous soups. Soups are, you know, they're just, you can, you can make a soup out of practically anything. Um, so learn to make soups, freeze them if needs be, and have them with great bread from a great breaker. Breaker. <laughs> um, so have, your soup, have a lovely warming soup on a cold day like this with great bread from a great baker. You can't ask for anything better. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you very much.